what do I not do? I pretty much do everything apart from whatever their job actually is. <laughs> so as you know, like you're obviously filmmakers, but there's like another 25 different business hats you need to wear apart from that. The goal isn't to live forever. The goal is to create something that will. Welcome to Perspective, a podcast for wedding craves, where we sit down often with a special guest and talk about our many years of experience in the wedding industry so that you can learn from us and grow your wedding business. Life's too short to do shit you don't like. And on today's episode of the podcast, we're bringing on wedding industry virtual assistant, Sarah Craig. She's the organized sidekick that you don't want to admit your business needs, but imagine Robin and Alfred rolled into one, allowing you to be Batman and reap all the rewards just focusing on the creative and exciting stuff you want to work on. Plus, let's be real, she's probably better at doing the boring stuff than you. So let's find out exactly what tedious tasks Sarah can tackle. But before we do that, this episode is of course sponsored by With Jack and for a limited time, beans.ie. So Greg, what are we drinking? We are drinking, it's the next Proud Mary roast that we've got, and it's still a Honduras. It's Chico's Buenos, and it's a washed bean, and it's for it's been roasted for filter. So we've brewed it up on the Chemex, mm-hmm. and this one's called Old Mate, is what old they've named mate. it, and it's in their mild category. That's, so, how I, that's how I describe you, my old mate. Hey, I'm not old. So it's nice, hopefully a nice wee mild sort of flavour profile for us this morning. Break yeah. is in easy to the day. That's right. Well, let's talk about Beans IE. As photographers and filmmakers and business owners, we know the power of stories. And Beans.ie do too. Beans.ie started because they knew there were so many stories about the world of coffee. And not just about the regions or the varieties, but about the people behind the beans. The roasters and us, the drinkers. This is the most flexible coffee subscription that we've ever used, showcasing some of the top roasters around the world who bring something different to the table. If you've been listening to the podcast, you know Greg and I like to talk about coffees at our podcast table, and now you can join us. Curate your own monthly subscription from an ever-changing list of beautiful coffees, and because we love you so much, we have a promo code. Use PERSPECTIVE15, that's PERSPECTIVE15, to get 15% off your first order. For coffees with stories sent straight to your door, beans.ie. Oh, did I just nail that live ad read? I think I did. Very good. And now for a drink, because my lips are thirsty. So we have Sarah Craig with us today, who Yay. is an Android user. And obviously, as listeners will know, this app that we're using to stream live is Clubhouse, is iPhone only. That's right. So we've got all work around here with the podcast desk. And Sarah Craig's coming in via the phone. Two phones. So hopefully you should be able to hear her. How are you, Sarah? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. It looks like everyone can hear you, but if you, if you can, give us a note on Instagram just to d- double check. Sarah, yes. How you been? I am good. Thanks. Not bad. How are you guys? You know what? We're actually buzzing because now we've got this very complicated setup for, for you and <laughs> You know, future guests who don't have uh, Apple devices, which, you know, it's fine with us. We are Apple fanboys, but we're not going to judge you. No, I was going to say, what, oh, what, no, what a- is wrong with you not being Apple? <laughs> I, I am a Google girl forever, for life, Android, PC. Yeah. Okay. PC for life? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> have you got anything to drink over there? I am drinking some tasty water. Oh, God, don't say you're not a coffee drinker either. I literally only <laughs> drink water. <laughs> I'm kidding. I am kidding. All these all these very, um, uh, there's a lot of water drinkers on, on, this guess, uh, yeah. on this guest list for season three. Yeah. Are we doing something wrong? Yeah. Is coffee out? It's a, it's a, I don't drink any hot drinks or juice or fizzy drinks or anything like that. Just water. So I'm the weirdo. That's exactly what Melissa Love said. She doesn't like hot drinks. Yep. No, no, neither do I. Oh, what, well, what, what is it about hot drinks that you don't like? The hotness. <laughs> the hotness. <laughs> that that would do it. That that would that would do it. Yep. Yeah. What about what, what about um, 
hot diluting juice. That's still hot, Simon. Oh, only if you're like. S- I know, but I w- only if you're sick and you're about eight years old. Yeah. Okay, I was gonna or say. Or if you've been out sledging all day. Uh, that, <laughs> yes. Well, we went sledging a couple of weeks ago, and that's what my wife brought out the hot diluting juice. And I thought, ooh, this is. I don't. I don't, I don't know no, how that, I feel about this. That's- that's only if you're ill. And, well, when I was growing up, you only got hot diluting juice if you were sick. Oh my goodness! Honestly, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, uh, it's, yeah. So I'm glad you've been well. I'm, I'm trying to think of the last time we actually saw you, Sarah. And well, I actually I, I saw you I at my came doorstep. To your house. Yeah, that's yes. right. <laughs> you came to my house to deliver a gift. For See, because our... I was being a very good VA. That yeah. is absolutely right. That was for the We Fell in Love Christmas night, right? Yeah, the post office was being, well, Royal Mail was being terrible. And I was like, I'm just going to have to be an elf and deliver these gifts IRL. So I went around people's houses delivering presents for the Christmas night out. That is incredible, by the way. One, because you found my house in that state. It's it's quite quite, quite challenging. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you, I mean, you delivered to, to loads of people. I great. did, yeah. It was a nice excuse to get out and about, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, I can imagine that would be true. Yeah. But La- yeah. Last time I saw you, it might be even as far back as the Edinburgh Fringe, that <gasps> time that we all went over. Oh, you mean the... Was... You mean that time we lost Emma Lawson? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and Emma's in the... <laughs> she's in the audience. That is so I right. Can't remember. I think I think Bongo Bingo was after the fringe. So I maybe Oh, saw maybe it was. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Bongo Bingo. Oh, I didn't do this. That was a strange night. I never thought <laughs> I would go to night. something like that, but it was great fun. So describe this <laughs> night. It was really for, good. Describe this night for people who don't know what Bongo Bingo is, like myself. Uh well Greg was dancing on the tables, I remember that. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, it was kind of, it's what I imagine some Hindus could end up like. There was what, a with lot you on the table? <laughs> well, no, no. And this is why he doesn't get invited to them. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. Honestly. Yeah, bong- bongo bingo is something you have to experience. I don't think you can really explain it in words. No, you can't explain, you just need to go. Oh, man, well... Enough of that, because all I can, just, <laughs> all I picture is Greg on, on like dancing wild on 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 a table for a bunch of hands. He was. But uh, anyway, thank you very much for joining us, Clubhouse listeners. Obviously, this is a reminder that there will be a Q and A at the end of the podcast. So if you have any questions about what it's like to work with a virtual assistant, hit us up, and um, you can ask Sarah directly because she is the master of all things. If you're not listening live on Clubhouse and you aren't a member of our Patreon page, you're leaving some amazing content on the table because you get access to all the Q&A content plus more. So if you want to support us on Patreon, it's patreon.com forward slash perspective by Cinemate. The link is in the show notes. However, Greg, let's get going. Sarah, I've already given you a short introduction at the beginning of this episode. However, I always like to hear what people think about themselves. So who are you and what do you do? Yeah, I really liked your uh, Alfred and Robin thing. I I like that. I might steal it. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) That was actually me. I wrote that. I was going to say, that that wasn't me. Oh, (laughs) nice. That wasn't me. And I wrote it knowing, I had a feeling you would like it and I knew Simon would like it. (laughs) So I was writing it with you guys in mind. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Excellent. I appreciate that, Greg. Thank um, you. <laughs> uh, who am I? Uh, I'm Sarah. I am primarily a wedding photographer and I have segued into becoming a virtual assistant. I'm a bit of a serial business starter and I have been since I was a very young child. Mm-hmm. Um, but the wedding photography is definitely the one that stuck the longest and the virtual assistant is the one that's made me quit my day job. So here we are, getting yeah. myself down to only two jobs rather than three or four. <laughs> well, we do we do obviously want to focus on the virtual assistant side um, of your work, but we know you're a wedding photographer. So how did that get started? 
Um, okay, that probably started back in 1997 when I was given a Spice Girls Polaroid camera for Christmas. <laughs> nice. I wondered where that was going. I was like, 1997? <laughs> <laughs> You're not that old. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, so that's probably where it started. So blame the Spice Girls. And I used all of the um, Polaroids taking photos of the cows in the field next door. So that was some well-spent Polaroid money for sure. Mm. Back when developing wasn't too expensive. <laughs> well, it was it was free, but the film was quite expensive. Yeah, true, true. Um, and then it sort of progressed to when I went to uni, I was doing a lot of music photography, but that was mainly so I could get into gigs for free. <laughs> which is a sneaky way to get into photography but sorry to all the music photographers whose money i probably um stole by being like i'll do it for free just let me in <laughs> fair, fair enough and then it sort of um progressed from there to i wonder how i can make money from photography weddings that'll be easy like money for a day's work Psh, i'm in and what, what when that's what? how it, so, so, you, so you made the decision to do weddings for the money, but what was your first wedding like? Um, <laughs> our, so it was me and my best friend uh, started photomacy photography, and just because we loved photography, and we're like, oh, let's see if we can make some money from this. We'll do some weddings. So, do what we normally do, you know, advertise on Gumtree like the pros that we were, and uh, this couple got in touch who were actually eloping, mm -hmm. so they were coming up from London to an estate in Dumfries. And we said we would do it if they gave us enough money for us to hire a car to drive to Dumfries. So that's <laughs> okay. what we did it for. We did it for car rental money. Awesome. Um, we, didn't have, <laughs> we didn't have a clue what we were doing. Um, I think we were like, we shot the wedding on, I think it was on like Aperture Priority. And then halfway through, we were both like, these don't look so good. I'm just going to switch to auto. And then we switched to auto and we're like, oh, this looks amazing. Like we are so good at this. <laughs> Brilliant. Is your friend still involved in Fotomaki? Um, she's not anymore, no. She has um, started a family, so she is focusing on that instead. So it's just myself now that runs Fotomaki. Yeah. How long ago was that that you got started in the wind industry? When did you rent that car? <laughs> <laughs> that was in 2012. So we started in 2012, but we just took it real, real slow. Like We both had full-time jobs. Um, up until maybe two years ago, I still had a full-time job as well. So it was just very, very slow. Maybe like one wedding a month, maybe sometimes less than that. I did lots and lots of second shooting as well. But that gave me the time to learn all of these other skills that you need to come along with being a wedding photographer. Because as we all know, it's not money for one day's work. <laughs> yeah. Do you still shoot auto? Yes, absolutely. Exclusively. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> well, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just, just had to jump in and clarify that there. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, so uh, talk to us about your style then. Okay. <laughs> um, so my st style of photography is just very fun, bright and colourful are the words that I hear used the most. So I want people's wedding days to look like they were a hell of a party. Like they were really fun. People were laughing. They were having a hell of a time and it just looks bright and colourful. So I know there's a bit of a trend just now, uh, like for dark and moody and stuff like and romantic and stuff. And I can do a little bit of romance, but let's face it, Scottish people, not that romantic. Mm, yeah. Yes, that is unfortunately the, yeah, the truth for the majority of Scottish. Yup. <laughs> yeah. Which is funny because we have such a romantic I history. I know. I think people just, they can't handle too much emotions. Being being British, we're not so good with the emotions. We're like, oh no, 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 thank you. Yeah, not good at showing the emotions publicly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hell no. Yeah, fair but enough. But they're good at partying. Good at partying. So just focus on the having fun part instead. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to, well, your style then, uh, colouring wise, very bright and vibrant. Is that throughout the whole, like... Do you do all your work like that? Yeah, yeah. I always yep. like to make things um, colourful, definitely. Cool. And well, some, sometimes it can get a little bit dark. If there's like direct sunlight or something, you know, I can play with the, the light and the shadows as well. But I yeah. still like to keep things fun. Mostly people are laughing in my photos. Um, uh -huh. I can do a couple serious ones as well, but I just prefer the ones that are full of fun. Cool. 
And obviously, Fotomaki, um, I know this, to play on uh, sushi, right? Yes, it is, yeah. So my um, friend, Christine, uh, just saw it. <laughs> she was in like the supermarket and she saw it, uh, Fotomaki, and she was like, oh, Fotomaki, we could go with Fotomaki. And it just stuck, even though neither of us actually eat sushi. <laughs> <laughs> But we've just rolled with it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, sushi is kind of, there is a variety of colors and like all that kind of stuff. And there is kind of like a, a visual display element to the food, which, yeah. you know, kind of goes well uh, with your kind of coloring and stuff like that. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Fuomaki actually translates to fat rolls, I think. So we, uh, we were like, it could be rolls of film, you know, that, that oh, could yeah. be the play. Oh, this pun goes deep, deep. There's multiple layers, yeah. I like it. You mentioned this. We fell in love. Are they, in fact, can you, are you allowed to talk about your client list? Is that something you're allowed to do? Um, I wasn't going to unless they had previously mentioned me because I wouldn't want to, you know, out anyone that was not wanting to be talked about. Yeah. I'm sure Christina wouldn't mind though. Kat and and I know Emma mentioned it last night, so they're okay. Yeah, I think <laughs> Nikki as well. She's and Nikki. she's talked about it before in in public. Yes. So. Yeah. See, I don't have Clubhouse, so I don't know who says what. So you'll just have to tell me who's mentioned me, and then I can talk about them. I think everyone's just so excited by the extra time they have and how good your work's been <laughs> that they're talking all about you, and then they're going, "Oh wait." Maybe we shouldn't be talking about her because then people will steal her. <laughs> <laughs> See, they have all this extra time to sit on Clubhouse and talk exactly. about all the extra time that they've got. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I don't have it. I don't have time for Clubhouse. I'm too busy doing all the other stuff. <laughs> uh, the, well, on their behalf, uh, they are sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you, Kat? You are. You are. You're, you're deep, deep, deep down. You're, you feel super bad. <laughs> Um, cool. Well, this maybe is a good segue then to start talking about your virtual assistant work. But before we do, just a reminder that there will be a Q&A at the end of the podcast. So if you're not listening on Clubhouse and you aren't a member of the Patreon page, you can, you, I mean, you are leaving some amazing content on the table, like I said earlier. So go to Perspective by Cinemate and the link will be in the show notes. So support the podcast and you can get that in your podcast. However, Ad read. Go, Greg. Go. With Jack was designed from the ground up and is tailored specifically for creatives. Whether you provide a service like design, development, or photography, or offer advice to clients, With Jack is for you. It's focused on creatives. Insurance shouldn't be complicated, so With Jack has made every step easy. You'll deal with one form and talk to one Jack as you sign up get covered and move on with your day with jack is all about bespoke insurance for creatives simple that doesn't mean more forms or faff it means less it's not about endless features and stale service it's about one solid policy and the personal touch bye bye unnecessary fuss hello creative friendly insurance be a confident creative and we're back I just want to bring attention to the fact that so I, we were on Clubhouse last night and everyone kept on making fun of me because I say bespoke in that ad read. And now all that's all I can hear, bespoke. Yep. Anyway, back to our <laughs> guest. <laughs> Let's go on to talking about the virtual assistant stuff. First of all, for the people who do not know, maybe they're newcomers to the industry or whatever their reason, what is a virtual assistant? Is it like a holographic, Greg? <laughs> from, from the future I mean it is the question that I get asked the most like li literally any time I say I'm a V or a virtual assistant people are just like what's that <laughs> so it's just imagine you had an assistant in the office with you to help with sort of general tasks I mean obviously for photographers you know I'm not taking photos for people but anything other than that people so you can get somebody to help you with it but then just imagine they're online only. So, uh -huh. you know, it, and everything's online. Like pretty much all of your workflow happens online. So I can do so much stuff. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the things that I'm asked to do the most are helping people with their website or SEO and blogging because everybody hates blogging. Yeah. Yeah. Do some people get confused by the fact that it's a virtual assistant? Do they get confused that and not understand that there's a real person behind that? Mm. I think the word virtual definitely does throw them. I think they do think it's some kind of hologram or something. They're just like, what do you mean? How is it virtual? <laughs> but, um, yeah, it literally just means that I'm not in person helping you. I'm just helping you over the majesty of the internet, which is where everything happens anyway. So it's basically like having an assistant. Indeed. Just out of curiosity, would you ever consider doing photography as a virtual assistant with virtual sessions? That's really confusing. I'm getting your inception in me now. What? <laughs> yeah, and I was struggling to follow that as well for well, a second. So, <laughs> so I'm I'm pretty sure. Do you know what a, a, a virtual session is? I do, but I do not understand how they work. It's honestly like magic to me. I've got friends who do them and they've explained it to me and I'm still like, I don't get it. I just don't understand how it works. Yeah, it's it's pretty funky. For those of you out there who don't know what a virtual session is, we're going to be saying virtual a lot on this podcast. Virtual (laughs) session is essentially um, you as a photographer are taking pictures of someone who is in their house from your location or wherever they are you're not with them and you are using their phone or whatever t- technology that you can control to get images. And um, if you want to learn more, I know we've got Kelly Quinn on the podcast that's coming up and who I think invented the virtual session is Tim Dunk, who I spoke to Greg the other day and I was like, I want to get Tim on the podcast. But yeah, so it's kind of uh, remote to photography. But I just thought, Sarah, just because... A virtual assistant, virtual photog- virtual photography, you know, maybe you'd be interested would, in doing something like that. That would be super meta. It would be, I know, even thinking about it, it is, yeah, it seems a bit crazy, but. <laughs> <laughs> obviously not. There's too much virtual think. stuff going on. I think virtual is probably the, the word of, you know, 2020 and 2021. Everything's just going to have to happen online now. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean. The sci-fi geek in me is kind of happy that's the case. I'm like, ooh, yes. Next, it'll be holograms and flying cars. Yes. (laughs) And hoverboards. (laughs) So, uh, Weaver, or Weaver? No. Weaver. (laughs) Wedding industry virtual assistant. What do you do for clients as a virtual assistant? What do I not do? I pretty much do everything apart from whatever their job actually is. <laughs> so as you know, like you're obviously filmmakers, but there's like another 25 different business hats you need to wear apart from that. And yes. I help with all of those other things. Um, I don't do accounts. I'm going to steer clear of accounts. But apart from that, I can pretty much do everything. I've... I jotted down some tasks that I'm currently doing for my clients just to give you a, a sense of things that I'm doing. So I'll take a deep breath. I'm currently <laughs> doing a uh, blogging and also sending people's work out to blogs to be featured, which is very important um, uh-huh. for your SEO. I do Instagram scheduling. I make client guides for people like PDFs or web pages. I design albums. I do SEO I do research for certain things like some client might be like, oh, can you research like photography competitions that I could enter? Or can you research um, packaging for this thing that I want to start sending out to people? Or can you research um, gifts that I can send to my clients? Um, I also, for one of my clients, I store all of the stuff for her gifts and make up her boxes for her and send them out for her. Oh, okay. um, I do. <laughs> yeah, so I've got a cupboard full of packaging as well and, and gifts. <laughs> I've got a lot of chocolate and gin in my cupboard that isn't mine, which is uh, quite disappointing. Well, so do I, but um, I'm a virtual assistant. <laughs> 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 I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Uh, <laughs> I do uh, website tweaks for people. I can do template population if someone's thinking about switching their website template, but they can't be bothered setting it all up. I can do that. Mm -hmm. Um, if people want to switch client management systems like if they're maybe thinking about taking on Studio Ninja or they're moving from Studio Ninja to Sprout Studio or something it's a lot of work 
moving things over and I can set all of that up for them. Or if they're moving galleries and stuff as well, I can do all the behind the scenes work for that. Um, I do inbox overhauls for people whose inboxes have just got out of control because I am an inbox zero girl. And if I see someone's inbox has like a thousand unread emails, it makes me want to cry and I need <laughs> to fix it. Hang on. I'm yeah, pretty sure. I'm the same. Greg, read out that number. What? Oh, don't. Two- Two thousand two hundred is the notification number on his phone. No, no, oh be, my god! Right, that that is only there because that that is the mail amp. But I was going to say, why are you not mail, using the Gmail app? I, I do use the Gmail app. It's got, got hundred and six on it. God, <laughs> <laughs> the one I concentrate my effort on is still hundred and six. Is there just a re- oh. is there a read all button? Because I gave up. So there was one email that just I couldn't find it. I could not find it at all. And it, j- there was just that one. It was one. One notification. And that was the <laughs> straw that broke my back. Seriously. I gave up after that. I gave up. So, I don't know. Is, I want, is there a read-all button? I just want to put it out there that those 106 that are in there will not be oh, any I, of our business ones. I was going to say, that's my personal <laughs> because account. Because I tried to keep the inbox <laughs> zero. I don't manage it because I use the inbox slightly as a reminder so, like, so when you scheduled this podcast, <laughs> I left that scheduling in the inbox so that I would know it was yeah, still there. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, but yeah. It was that's what I do as well. Like, I, yeah, I leave, I leave the ones that still are pending in the inbox, but everything else is, is inbox zero for sure. Like, I kind of be dealing with notifications um, piling up. It was just stress me out. So, <laughs> I do, I do quite like overhauling people's inboxes and sorting them out and putting everything into folders and stuff. It's quite satisfying. Yeah, we have uh, Finn Fluker uh, listening, and she's just messaged me. Obviously, absolutely horrified that I have that many unread emails. Um, this is shocking. You need a VA, Simon, with the monkey emoji, and then just laughing. She's laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for yes. that, cat. <laughs> uh, yeah so i'm sorry if 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 that makes you sad I d- yeah I d- it's pretty it's pretty stressful yeah why the wedding industry virtual assistant why not just a virtual assistant for anyone who needs it um i just want to niche down and keep in to the industry that i know about because i'm i guess i'm more than a virtual assistant because i have i'm more than like a generic virtual assistant because I have so much wedding industry knowledge as well I'm also a really good sounding board for my clients so they'll come uh-huh. to me with ideas as well they'll be like oh what do you think about this and I'm like oh well I know that other people have done this and I've seen that or I've seen this so it's actually quite good for brainstorming as well not just like they don't just send me tasks like oh can you go do this normally it's a discussion back and forth and we come up with ideas together so I'm okay. actually like quite a good um little business helping hand as well for ideas and things like that too so because I've got so much wedding industry knowledge and I've got so many wedding industry friends as well who have different like Kat obviously is a planner and my other friend Mel is a florist and so I've got quite a good breadth of um, listening to people's gripes about things that they don't like and a lot of the stuff is across the wedding industry like everybody needs to do SEO everybody needs to work on blogs and stuff like that. And if I'm sticking to the wedding industry, then I'm really um, honing my knowledge of all of these things. So when I'm helping another client, I'll be like, oh, I've already done this for someone else. So I already know, you know, the the answers that you're looking for. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. That that makes sense. Sort of becoming the expert in that industry. And you know, you know a lot of the aspects of that industry already. So it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 totally does. Yeah. So why do you want to do all the crappy little tasks that everyone else tries to put off and doesn't want to do like what's what's in your makeup that makes you want to do those things i am just a straight up weirdo (laughs) i didn't want to say that (laughs) (laughs) i remember um photography farm i think it might have been the first photography farm and david mcginty of walnut wasp was doing a talk and there was maybe 30 or 40 people in the room and he asked, um, who here prefers the the business side of their business rather than the photography side? And it was me and one other person that put their hand up. And I wish I could find that other person and get them to come and work for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, maybe we can help with that. If you are listening and you want to become a virtual <laughs> assistant, 
Please, up, no, please. <laughs> hit up Sarah Griggs. She obviously wants to do more and more and more crap. So help her to do more crap work. <laughs> oh, no. So good work. work. Good work, but doing the good work, that's the crap work. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so I just obvious. I find those yeah I find the like behind the scenes jobs quite satisfying because they're quite they're quite black and white you've either done it or you've not done it but with photography it's so interpretive like have I done a good job well that person thinks I've done a good job but someone else maybe doesn't think it's a very good job but you know if you're getting a, a job to do that's setting up someone's client management system you've done it you've done it well it works job done yay yeah <laughs> That is actually a really good point. And I've not really even thought about this. This is probably why I'm always never happy with editing a film. Because a film you could always make better. You could always make tweaks. You could always do this yeah. and this and this. And then, you know, Greg's like, oh, have you put that bit in? And then you're like, well, I don't, I'm, like, it looks cool, but I don't know if the client will like yeah. that. Or or sometimes I've put in a bit that, like, looks really cool. And Greg's like, maybe um, you should make a film for the client or, or <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> Um, there's always little twer- t- tweaks and, and song choices and oh you're right oh Sarah you've drawn you've drawn that to my attention now damn it I'm never happy I'm never happy <laughs> I'm a serial like people pleaser so I just I like help I love helping people and when my clients come back to me and they're like oh my god like thank you so much for doing that it's been a total weight off my shoulders now that that's done um, I've had clients say that like the fog has cleared from their business, like they were just feeling a bit depressed about it and they didn't know where to start. And now that I've come on board, they've got they've got feeling a purpose back about them, and it's really like lit a fire under their ass and made them passionate again to you know get started. I know we can't really do much just now, but they're ready to get started for for when they can because they feel like everything from their to do list has been taken care of. And yeah, I really yeah. love that. I love helping people. Are you finding that people? Because obviously we've not been shooting, but people want people don't want to do the back end stuff so much. Like, do you find that they that they have now got so much of a backlog that they just don't even want to tackle it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think because of what's happened, people are rightly so pretty down about the whole industry, and they mm. just don't want to. They just don't want to start. They don't want to look at it. They don't want to think about it. Um, so if they're bringing someone on board like me who's like enthusiastic about doing these things then it's really helping them as well be like all right okay we can do this and we can get back on track and you know things aren't so bad you know things are looking up it's going to get better and then when it does start when we can start shooting again I'm in a really good position to to kick off the next wedding season Mm. yeah yeah it sounds like you're the sort of person that likes to see a to-do list get ticked off do you, oh, do you have yes, hundred percent. Sort of, do you have like a ritual either the night before or in the morning for planning out your day at all? Um, I do like if it's if I'm doing a, a wedding day or something like that. I've got an itinerary. I've got like a checklist. I've got like my packed lunch all ready to go. Love it. Yeah, very cool. We probably shouldn't talk about our ritual before the podcast. When we, <laughs> when we we slaughter two lambs over the podcast desk just to <laughs> praise the gods. What? No. <laughs> I'm kidding. I thought I thought it, I thought it was going to fe- be something something else. <laughs> I'm feeling really quirky today, and I don't know why. <laughs> I do apologize. <laughs> so, what you sort of touched on it a wee bit there, but what impact for the client does hiring a VA have on their business? Yeah, I think it just gives them a really good um, focus because. Everybody who runs their own business has a to-do list a mile long. Like the to-do list never ends. There's so many things that you could be doing, should be doing. And I think when someone comes on board like me, I can really help them focus on what is important. So sometimes when people join me, they'll give me a list a mile long and I'll be like, that's great, but what's important? Like, what is the thing that you're like, you know, if this gets done, this will make a difference to my business. And that's where we start. And then we just go on from there. And then normally after they get me to do one or two things, they're like, oh, maybe you could do this. Maybe you could do that. Oh, what about this? Do you do that? And then it just sort of snowballs from there. And I think it really helps them focus on what they want to like niche their business down into. Because a lot of the times they'll be taking me on to do maybe website work. And I'll be like, okay, so what's your main focus? Because right now you're doing weddings, 
families, newborns, boudoir. Like you can't focus on all of those things equally. So where do you want to focus? And it makes them think about where they want their business to go and then adapt their website to suit that. Almost sounds like by almost by accident or default, it's almost a wee bit of business coaching as well. Yeah, yeah, a little like, bit. Yeah, because mm. I think it's good to talk these things through with someone as well, especially because I've got uh, quite a lot of experience of helping different businesses as well. Um, that even just talking it through with someone can help because they might talk to their partner about it, but their partner is maybe not in the wedding industry and can't really advise them one way or the other. Um, yeah. And then maybe sometimes they'll talk to me about it and I'll be like, oh, do you know, actually, they'll have an idea. And I'll be like, nobody's actually doing that right now that I've seen. So why don't you just go hard for it? And you could be, you know, the, at the forefront of this new thing, new idea that you've got. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you describe yourself as a pessimist or an optimist or a realist during these conversations with folk? Because I, oh, oh, I, <laughs> I have these conversations with Greg and he's like, I think that's just a bit too crazy, Simon. And maybe he's right. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Shoot for the moon, for sure. I am definitely an optimist. I think if you're like, go hard, why not? Like, the, even if you start down a path and it doesn't go where you want it to go, it might take you somewhere completely different and better. You never know. I think you should always just go for it. Yeah. 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 See, Greg. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> don't, you, uh, don't you hold him back, Greg. You're so mean. Yeah, I guess a lot of people will find even just sending a task list to their virtual assistant useful because it makes them sit and think or talk to somebody about it when they're usually yeah. a solo entrepreneur or the only person yeah. working on the business. But as Simon said earlier, a lot of people are maybe daunted by their to-do list or don't want to, they know they should be approaching it just now, but they're not. But it must also be a tough time for people to part with money, so to hire and outsource things. Mm-hmm. So some people might feel, why do I want to pay for these tasks? I think I think paying for them actually helps because they've then got it in their mind. Oh shit, I've paid money for this, so I need to do it. Whereas if it, if it's on their to-do list, it'll just stay there forever because there's not really any incentive for them to do it, apart from the fact that they should and need to do it. But if they've paid money for it, there and I'm saying to them, okay, I need this by this date, and I need this by this date, and we can get it done. They're like, oh shit, Sarah's asking for it. I need to get it done because I've paid her money, and there's no point paying her money to not do anything when she's literally sitting there trying to help me. That's a very good point, actually. I think money makes it real for certain people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I had a, yeah. I had a consultation last night actually, and. She was very, like, I'm actually surprised, starting a business during a pandemic, I'm surprised how well it's done so far because a lot of people obviously don't have any money coming in. Mm-hmm. But they've also not got, a lot of people have families and there's no school just now or school's just started back. So they've just not got time to do anything. And the girl that I spoke to last night who's wanting her website refreshed was just like, take my money, just take my money. Here you go. It needs done. I've been look, I've been staring at it for hours and I've got nowhere. And I just know that if we do this together, it's going to be done in like a couple of weeks time. And then it'll be like the best. Very yeah. cool. Do you think that's usually the mindset of people that are coming to you is just take this off my hands and do it? Or do you think some of the customers can visualize what this value is going to be if they pay something to get these tasks done they're going to have more time to do jobs where they're earning money rather than the menial tasks yeah yeah exactly they're going to have more time a lot of them it's just they don't have time because of family stuff um because of the have there, there's no schools and stuff just now but yeah a lot of the time there's like you know if you help me with this I'm gonna have more time to actually you know do shooting or spend time with my family or do other things that mm-hmm. they want to do some of them are exploring other businesses that they want to try and open so they're getting help with that as well there's I think the pandemic has brought out a lot of creativity in people and there's a lot of new businesses being started um a lot of like photographers starting other businesses not to do with photography and uh-huh. wanting wanting help with that as well but I think it's like having an accountability buddy as well I'm gonna be there to kick their ass because I'm like you've paid me to do this and I need the information so get it done definitely I'm a hard taskmaster <laughs> yeah no my brain just went somewhere just disappeared 
No. Um, <laughs> left the building. I, I quite often find myself, and I don't know if other people do this, but you're with your family and you've stepped away from work. Like, this is your family time, but you're thinking, you're thinking about that task. You're thinking, <laughs> you know what? I, I could be, I could be doing that podcast research. You could be writing that yeah. script. I find it really hard to, to let go. To switch off. Yeah. Yeah. Where I know some people are like when they're with their family, they're hundred percent with their family and then with their work, they're hundred percent with their work. So I'm guessing you could probably help with that kind of person where they struggle to let go of, mm -hmm. you know, the work or to actually yeah, bring to bring them into the moment, essentially. <laughs> Definitely. I just, I tell people that they can message me um, anytime they want. A lot of people like voice notes, which is fine with me. And I'm like, you know, when something pops into your head, just send me a text on WhatsApp or just send me a voice note with the idea and we can, you know, circle back to it next time that you're free. So I think in that situation, if they're with their families or they're having a day off or they're trying to switch off, but something pops into their head, they can yeah. just shoot me a voice note or they've actually, all, all my clients have got their own um personal email address and if you send an email to it, it adds the task to my to-do list so they can just oh, send okay. an email they can just send an email that goes straight onto my to-do list and then they just uh -huh. don't have to think about it anymore because they know that either I'll circle back to them with it or I'll just do it whatever the the thing is that they need done you know you mm -hmm. know and they, they can just let it go let that thought go Sarah's dealing with it and then back to whatever they were doing yeah now now that we've got you here I see Emma Lawson's joined us on clubhouse if you just want to text me her passwords <laughs> so, that I can, <laughs> so that i can hack her let's, uh, is... <laughs> yeah, let, let's talk about security then H how do you manage <laughs> someone's account if they're worried about oh my god i I'm, I'm gonna have to give them my bank account i'm gonna have to give them my w whatever it may be password for a google or, or password for the website like how, how do you work? Yeah, it's with that? it's uh, it's it's kind of scary how many people's lives I could ruin in an instant. To be honest, I just <laughs> I know everything. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> I have all of the informations. <laughs> um, I get people to send me most things via WhatsApp because it's encrypted, so they can um, send me all their passwords and stuff on that. Um, a lot of people need to up their password game, is what I will say. Yeah. Oh, Some, yeah, I know. I remember Some, we used LastPass, and I remember when Greg put it on, and, uh, oh, man. I mean, it has changed the game. Like, once you're up and running with it, it's changed the game. Is there anything you, obviously, Simon mentioned LastPass there. Is there anything else you would recommend for a listener if if they're thinking, oh, crap, I do have a really unsecure password? Um, I don't have any sort of, like, app recommendations. They just need to make them better, that's all. <laughs> Just make them better. <laughs> Emma, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> oh, you, she's busted now. <laughs> oh, no, that's it. Your, your business is over, Emma. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just joking. <laughs> on, the, on the last episode of, of the podcast, we were speaking to Melissa Love, and Greg announces to everyone that one day he put on some software to track my workload your, now your productivity my product what apps you were using at what times a day yes that's 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 right i recommend you don't do that obviously greg and i have been friends for a very long time so i'm okay with that <laughs> uh, <laughs> but how, how do you track your hours and how do you communicate that with customers especially in sure, terms yeah. of like pricing and money and stuff because maybe skeptics skeptics out there might think Oh, you're just going to take a little bit longer to do that PDF. Uh -huh. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> there is a run has done that. No, I guess it is, it's definitely an issue of trust, but I, I am honest to a fault, uh, me. So I have software that I use. I set up all of my clients on it. And so people buy blocks of time from me. So you can buy like 10 hours, 15 hours, 20 hours uh, a month. Mm -hmm. And the software that I use has all of the tasks on it so it's got my to-do list for every person mm -hmm. and then i just so hit the play, hit the play button when i'm starting a task and then i can pause it and i can stop it i can come back to it and then their hours just you know count down so every monday they get sent a status report and it shows them everything that's on my to-do list how long i've been doing it for how long tasks have taken what tasks have been completed so they can see how many hours they've got remaining oh damn that's actually that's actually pretty cool yeah, it's really good, actually. Yeah, they can see everything. 
yeah, d- does having that help you focus on tasks as well? Oh, definitely. Because as soon as the timer is counting, I'm like, I'm focused. I'm locked in. Like if my husband comes to talk to me, I'm like, hold on, hold on. I need to pause. I need to pause. I can't talk to you while the timer's running. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's cool. So, so you price for time and you monitor your time. You don't price for yeah. certain tasks. That's cool. No, that's un- cool. unless it's like a one-off task, like some people can come to me and they just want like an SEO makeover and that's like a set uh-huh. price. Um, but okay. most people m- want more than one job. Uh, everyone yeah. who's come to me so far, they normally come to me with one job and then they're like, oh, actually, maybe you could do this other thing as well. And then so <laughs> I'm just like, just buy a block of time. We'll see how we get on. But so yeah. far, I've, I've not lost any clients. They've all rolled over into the next month because they all keep finding more and more tasks for me to do. Yeah, that is really cool. That's like the upsell. Mm-hmm. It's like a photographer <laughs> wanting to sell photo albums. There's, although al- there's always more tasks. <laughs> yeah, although I, I, I've, I've always found this weird about photographers. They never actually want to sell the photo album because they can never be bothered sitting down and actually doing it. Is that, is that something know. you do? They all do, you do? Say, yeah, I do do yeah. that because there's so many photographers leaving money on the table because they don't do products. And I'm like, your clients want products. They want them. They just don't know how to do them. I'm like, yeah. you can actually, like, it's not, they're, oh, I hate sales. It's like, it's not sales. It's a service. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And well, <laughs> not to pick on photographers, obviously, videographers are just as bad because w- we have one of the easiest things to sell. It's the raw footage. Now, I know photographers don't really sell their raw images because of the look and style, but the raw footage for a videographer is something that we can give pretty easily. Like, super easily, actually. You just dump it onto a drive and there you go. But some people are just so prideful about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can charge a fair whack of money for that raw footage that you just need to dump onto a hard drive and just give it off. Like, I find it crazy that that, uh, videographers do not do that. I really do. Because they are, like you said, leaving money on the table. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a funny... Plus... It takes skill to do what we do, you know? It's hard. It's a hard work. It, it's it's a hard job putting together a good film. I, Definitely. Like, unle- unless they're a professional, they're kind of really going to struggle with working with the kind of stuff or editing something. And I don't know. I, and I hear this a lot of time from videographers and, and filmmakers that... They're worried that the clients are going to go away and and steal the fo- steal steal their footage and make something and and put it out there. And I'm thinking. That's one no. film that they could maybe possibly do that with, and you're sitting here with a with a whole year's worth of work, two years, three years, four years worth of amazing weddings, and you're worried about that one wedding, and then not making money from the raws. I just I find it so weird, a strange mentality. Anyway, I don't want to get too negative. <laughs> <laughs> so Plus, I, I, I think I think the client would maybe try and do something with the raw footage and then go, oh no, actually, this is really hard. I'm not going to do anything with it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so let's let's dive into this the service of like setting one of your clients up to sell products or sell albums mm-hmm. or design them. Tell us in a bit more detail about how you actually provide that for someone and what what you actually do. Sure, sure, yeah. So I had a, a client that came to me who does beautiful, gorgeous um, family and newborn work and she wasn't selling any products and she said their clients were asking for them but she just didn't know where to start. It, like she, right. d- she didn't even know any um, you know, providers who to go with or anything. And I was like, oh, that's, that's fine. We can get you sorted. It's no problem. So I sent her a couple of different um, album providers, you know, like Loxley and Sim and a couple of others have a look, see which ones you like the look of. So she picked Loxley. And then I was like, okay, I'll compile a list of the products that I think would sell well for you. And you can just let me know if you like them or you don't like them. So I just sent her a list. Here's three albums that I think would sell well for you. Here's a couple of um, wall art pieces I think would sell well for you. And then she just went through, don't like that one, maybe that one, oh, I like that one. And so from that, I compile a spreadsheet with the products on it, what they um, will cost her, what I think she should sell them for. Um, And then sometimes they'll come back and go, oh, that seems really expensive. And I'm like, it sounds expensive because you've not seen it in your hands. Let's get you some samples. 
So what we do is order them some samples. As soon as the samples arrived, she was like, okay, I see now why this costs so much because it's mm-hmm. flipping gorgeous. It's beautiful. And I was like, exactly. I was like, see if you put that in the hands of your clients, they will buy them. So next time yeah. you go to a shoot, bring that sample with you and show it to them. And since then she's sold two albums already and it's already covered the money that she's paid me to be her virtual assistant. Yeah. Yes. And then those profits will just continue. Yes, exactly. So that's yeah. awesome. So, yeah. So now she's got, a, so then I went and designed a price list for her, mm-hmm. uh, made a, made a page on her website for products. And yep. um, she took some, she took images of the, the sample and stuff. We got all of that, collated it together, sent it out to some clients and she's got, um, orders coming through now for products but i'm just dealing with it all for her so i design the albums i order the albums they get sent straight to the clients she literally doesn't have to do anything that is awesome i yeah. mentioned i mentioned that we were speaking to melissa love on the last episode of the, of the podcast and we were talking about value the value proposition mm-hmm. imagine how much money you're gonna make potentially of doing of putting in that initial initial investment in a virtual assistant yeah. You're getting the job done and you once you pay it off, it just keeps on running. Can yeah. you afford yeah. can you afford in your business not to hire a virtual assistant to have that service for your clients to make you money? Probably not. Yeah. So if yeah. you're feeling very pride, prideful of your work, like I do, I understand. I really do. But maybe you and I, listener, we need to back ourselves off a wee bit. And <laughs> let let's work on our business and not in our business. Yeah, de- definitely. What you're saying there about gathering some sort of printers and products that they offer and getting them, that all, I guess, comes back to you having the experience in the wedding industry and knowing these connections to tell your client. Yes, definitely, because I've already got accounts with all of these places, so they don't even have to create accounts to be able to see the prices because I've already got accounts with them. I can log in, see all the prices and stuff, whereas if they were doing the research, they would need to apply to these places for um, accounts, sign up for accounts, log in, collate all the information, try and get it all together, but I've already got access to all of that. Um, And I got access to a lot of different album printers and packaging like for USB boxes and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. all of the information I've already got there so they don't need to faff about um, collating all, which would be probably a good few hours work for them if they were to do that. But for me, it would maybe only take half an hour or an hour. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess you have to get working with so many different clients. They'll use different sort of printers, different software, different websites and stuff. You must have to be like, an expert and have knowledge of each different system, like pick time, pixie set, all these different things? Yeah, up until I started doing the VE work, I only had experience of like the things that I was using, but now I've been yep. doing the VE work for about six months now, so I've got a good look around a lot of different systems, um, mm-hmm. which is quite good as well, because people will come to me and they'll say, right, I'm thinking about moving website, and then I just ask them like three or four questions, and then I can determine what would be best for them, d- depending on their needs. Or if they're looking for um, a gallery system or a client management system, I can be like, okay, well, I've used these five different ones and I think this one is best for you because. So it can really cut out a lot of time for them as well if they're, you know, if they're havering between what to go for. Yeah, something that, so we use pick time to deliver our films and gallery sort of thing to our clients. They've got a really amazing way of, upselling like if you're a photographer you can easily sell prints through pick time and i love that how it's so simple but the hard part of it and tedious part is setting up what products you do want to have available and setting up what your profit margin is going to be on them yeah, so yeah. those sort of things I assume you can help with for a client yeah 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 i did set up someone's pick time from start to finish and it is quite a it's quite a laborious process pick time to be honest to set up the back end of it I think because they just offer so many products and providers in the back end, it takes ages to go in and switch them all off, to be honest, and just have the ones that you want. And it's just from my knowledge of working with all these different people and my photography knowledge, I can kind of tell, like, there's no point in having 50 different print sizes on your gallery. You're just going to bamboozle your clients who are in looking at it, like, oh, do I want a, a... 8 by 10 or do I want an 8 by 12 like what's the difference like you should just offer them like three or four different sizes of everything like don't 
have don't have everything switched on. Nobody will buy anything because it's just too much information. Yes, a, a lot of people on the podcast have have brought this up in different ways, in different not industries but in different parts of the industry. Right, the paradox of choice. This mm-hmm. is the, the this is kind of what it's been kind of labeled at. And it's like you don't even make a decision because you're worried about making the wrong one. So if yes. you are sell, if you have, you know, uh, your pick time, and it does have a million different sets of of, of images, and your client goes in, they're going to be overwhelmed, and mm-hmm. they're going to think, "I am going to make the wrong decision by doing this," so they don't do it. No, absolutely. It, yeah. I, I- Always suggest people just have a small, a medium, and a large of everything. That's yes. all you need. Yeah, exactly. And um, would you, yeah. So would you put in the sizes of the images, or would you just put small, medium, and large? Um, so I would just put the sizes of the images, but it's quite obvious that it's a small, a medium, and a large because normally yeah. it would be like you know an eight by ten, then a like yeah. I don't know whatever a twelve by sixteen, and then a sixteen by twenty four or something, so they can tell. Yeah. Oh, okay, it's a small, a medium, and a large, rather than having yeah. like forty five different sizes, and they're just like I don't know what this means. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I, I always find that kind of mindset really interesting, and I've I've always known about that mindset, but I didn't realize it had a title until a, maybe a couple of months ago where I was. Uh, looking through some books and there is a book uh, that talks about it so yeah but I mean it's it's been a big thing in business um, you know the, like you said the kind of threes that's why in our industry you used to have or maybe people even still do have uh, the small wedding package the medium wedding package and the large wedding package you kind of yeah. want to aim the majority of the people at your medium so you want to yeah, kind of make yeah. yeah you want to kind of undersell undersell is that the right term greg undersell the small one like give them a lot less than what they maybe were hoping for Mm -hmm. so that they do go into the 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 medium but you still got the large one for clients who have or want to invest in more so definitely yeah Yeah. And, and they always say like if you're selling your large package then you need to put your prices up because the large package is only there to make the medium package look affordable. Exactly. So it's a good good way to judge whether to put your prices up or not. Yeah. Let's talk about a little bit of self-help. I know obviously you do the task that no one else does or wants to do rather, but <laughs> give us one thing at least that someone can do today to help them with their back-end stuff in their business? Oh, yes. Okay. My first thing, the most important thing I would say is to make sure that your Google Search Console and your Google Analytics are set up and collecting information. That's the most important thing that you can do for your business. Because whenever someone takes me on board, it's normally the first thing I ask them. And if they've not set it up, It takes a while to collect data, so you want it to be set up as early as possible. Even if you never plan on looking at it, just get it set up. It's not super difficult to set up. It's it's probably Uh like a 10-minute job each. Maybe not 10 minutes for me. Okay, maybe like a 45 to an hour (laughs) long job. (laughs) But if they they have that set up and collecting information, if they bring someone on like me, then I have everything that I need. It's already there, which is great for like working on your website or your SEO. Mm -hmm. Also, you can see what people are searching on Google and how they find you, which is what everybody wants to know. What are people searching for? Yeah, Yeah. so I was going to say for what effect will that have on their business? If they get that set up, what then does that do for them? So it doesn't improve your SEO, but it just gives you all the information that you need to improve your search engine optimization. So you can go into your Google Search Console and see the exact queries that people have typed into Google and Google has delivered your website to their eyeballs. They might not have clicked on it, but they've seen it. It's came up in the search results. So you can see exactly what people are searching for, how much they're searching for it, whether they clicked on your website or not. It's super valuable information. Yeah. So earlier on, you mentioned Studio Ninja and Sprout Studio, which they are CRM programs. That's Mm -hmm. right, isn't it? So anyone that's listening and doesn't know what a CRM is, can you kind of explain what that is? Sure, yeah. So I've actually just moved to one myself. So up until now, because I'm a super organized person, I had just been using a spreadsheet 
um, to keep a track of my clients. So it would have like all my clients, their wedding date on them, and then at what stage of my workflow they were at. So it would be like, we've had a consultation, they've signed the contract, they've paid the deposit, you know, I've sent them a welcome pack, we've done the couple shoot, you know, all these different sort of touch points that I go through with each one of my clients. But a CRM is basically automating all of that for you, um, which makes it super easy and just makes it really slick as well because your emails are coming to the clients branded with your logo and stuff on them. They look really nice. The contracts and invoices are all online. They have access to their own little client portal where they can go in and see their contracts and invoices. And then you have like your workflows, which are like your checklists. And a lot of them you can automate as well. So if you're constantly sending the same email to clients a month before the wedding or two months before the wedding, you can automate all this. So it'll just do it for you. So it saves you having to go into your spreadsheet and go, oh, right. Oh, no, I forgot to send that email to them. I was meant to send it to them last week. I'll do it just now. It's all just doing it all in the background for you. It can take a while to set these up. Um, A lot of people take me on just solely to set them up because you have to you know import all your client data set up all the contracts and invoices and workflows etc but they are actually they're really really good for your productivity time you're spending less time dealing with client back end stuff because you know that a lot of it's being automated and or you can Mm -hmm. just log in look at your dashboard and see what your checklist is like oh yeah i need to set up that couple shoot with so-and-so or i need to schedule a consultation with you know blah 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 yeah Okay, what CRM or or even other software would you recommend that people install into their workflow? Um, yeah, I've got a co- I did I did write a little list for you actually. Um, these are the ones that I would recommend that everybody get on board with. Um, I'm a big fan of Google Drive. I use Google Drive for everything, but that's maybe just because I love spreadsheets. But it's really mm-hmm. good for um, keeping a lot of things in one place, like any files, spreadsheets, docs. You can use it for forms as well, which is great there because they're free Google Forms. So you can set up a booking form for clients or an album order form, which is what I use mine for, or questionnaires. So if anyone's ordering an album, I've got a Google Form set up where they can go in and pick their cover and write the text that they want on the front. And it's a good opportunity to upsell them as well. Like, oh, do you want to upgrade your album, you know, to the fine art album? Just tick this box here and I will invoice you for it. I think having forms that people fill in when they're parting with money can be a good way to upsell things without feeling like you're doing sales. So if you're filling Uh in a form to like book a full day's wedding photographer or whatever, you can have extras at the bottom like, oh, do you want me to stay till the end of the night? Tick here. Do you want to add on an album? Tick here. And they're just spending money by just having it on a form because if you're not giving them the option, you know, they don't know it's there. Okay. Would you recommend, (laughs) I mean, is this something you you could install for people if they're really struggling with CRMs? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, for sure. Yeah. Like, you don't need to have a CRM. You can just, you know, keep a track of things on, on a spreadsheet and use, like, Google Forms to ha- have all of this stuff for free, or you can pay to yeah. use a CRM. Uh-huh. Um, other okay. things I would recommend are an Instagram scheduling app. I use Planoly, which I really love, because you can use it on desktop, which is great, because I hate doing things on my phone. I just find it too fiddly and annoying. I just want to use a computer to do it. Yeah. So you can schedule all of your um, Instagram posts, and you can cross-post them to Facebook as well, and you can use another app called IFTTT to cross-post your Instagrams onto a Pinterest board as well. So you're doing like three things in one, which can be quite good. Uh-huh. Okay, um, cool. Shall I keep going with my other apps I recommend? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also really recommend Calendly, which I think oh, yeah. use, use that. Yeah. Calendly is oh, great. Oh my you, God, please. Calendly is so good. We use it for the it's podcast. It's so to good. It's guests. brilliant. It I love is, it. it. <laughs> It really is. It's so good for organizing calls. It's good for just locking people down into a day and just organizing stuff with other people out with your business as well. Yeah, it's, like, it's so good. It. And it's yeah. free as well. Like You can upgrade to paid accounts if you want extra perks, but the free one works brilliantly, I think. I end up mm-hmm. setting up Calendly quite a lot for my clients to schedule in client meetings. 
Mm-hmm. And it's great because you've got your own branded link as well. So you like the link never changes. So you can just embed that into your email templates and you can send that to inquiries and say, do you want to set up a chat? Click here. And then it, yeah. all of a sudden it's on your calendar. It's in their calendar. You've both been emailed. The chat's set up. There's no back and forth about when do you want to meet? Oh, maybe Tuesday at two. No, I can't do that. What about Friday at four? Like they've got your availability and they can just book in, like make it as easy as possible for clients to give you money. Yeah, exactly. Greg, do we have the the paid account or are we yeah, using the free? We, yeah, okay. We're Calendly, we used the free account for a good few years just to schedule the client meetings. Mm. As you say, send the link out and they can book in at a time that you've said you're available and it suits them and it saves it back and forth. But now that we use it for multiple other things, we've got loads of Calendly calendars set up. So we upgraded to the paid account just over a year ago, I think. Yeah. And yeah, yeah it's brilliant. Yeah. You guys it. fancy. It's even super handy to get someone you know, like scheduled in for the podcast, say, uh, in a different time zone. Like it mm, just makes yes, it like it's really, so good I, for I know that. that's, yeah, yeah. I, I know that may, maybe is a random feature, but, but that is something I really appreciate. No, um, I really like that because, because I've got um, a client in Canada as well. So like when she's setting oh, up yeah. a chat with me, it's in her time zone and in my time uh-huh. zone, which is so good because I find it is, uh, or if you've got international clients who are trying to set up a video chat, it's so good that yes. it does the multiple time zone things is great. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, definitely ca- Calendly. Uh, super good, super good for like if you're a destination videographer or a destination photographer, this is an app that you really should have on your system. It's great. Um, following on from Calendly as well, I also use a chat room called Whereby and shout out to Kat from FinFlickGra because it was her that uh, put me onto it. But you can have your own your own room on there. So it's a branded link. So it's the same link every time. And you can put this link into your Calendly so that when you send mm-hmm. out the emails, they already know where you're meeting. They're not like, oh, are we doing a Zoom? Are we, or is it Facebook? Or is that like a Skype? You're like, no, no, it's just this room. You just like come here. It's the same link every time. And you don't, nobody needs an account or an app or any login details or passwords or links or anything like that. So it's super easy as well. So whenever my uh, Calendly emails go out, it's got the link to this is the room that I'll meet you in. And it's mine's is branded. So it's like whereby.com slash Weaver. And it's just the same every time I'll see you there. That is yeah. really cool. Yeah. It's a really good little chat room. Very cool. Very cool. And uh, does it allow you to do voice notes? Kat's a big fan of voice notes. <laughs> she loves the <a> voice note. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. I'm, I'm a convert as well. Yeah. Love she it. was her it was her that converted me actually so shout, shout out to cat for the voice notes <laughs> she doesn't really oh, give you a choice yeah awesome sarah uh, craig thank you very much for you joining are, us you're very welcome sarah for all those who maybe don't know where to find you online yet where can people find you sure you can find me at weaver.uk which is w-i-v-a.uk which is my website and my Instagram is at Weaver underscore UK. Yes, definitely get in contact with Sarah. And yes, we wish you all the luck in your virtual assistant ting. <laughs> Thank that was, you. Uh, that was awful. That was awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people can find us at cinematefilms.co.uk. Our Instagram and our Facebook are Cinemate Films as well. You can also join our Patreon at Perspective by Cinemate. We hope you loved this episode, and if you did, you can join us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash perspective by Cinemate. For as little as a pound, you can support the podcast, and also where for the price of a coffee every month, you can get access to the Clubhouse Q&As, our roundhouse discussions, and even more bonus content, which you won't be able to get anywhere else. If you don't have any money to give, that is absolutely fine. You are still our friends. You can hit that subscribe button wherever you get your podcasts and get your usual podcast for free. Maybe consider leaving a review and we'll give you a shout out on the next podcast. However, in the meantime, enjoy your life. <laughs>